Hi, I'm Michael Heron. Today we'll be drawing a portrait with compressed charcoal. I'll also be using a kneadable eraser, a torsion and a white pastel for highlights. This is our beautiful subject, Natasha. Hi. Our challenge is to capture something of her character on the page. We're trying to achieve a three-dimensional look through line, tone and directional shading. It can be a real challenge to break your subject down into shapes, volume and tone. But if you can focus on getting your foundations right, their character will come through when you add the details at the end. Here's where we'll end up. Let's see how we got there. When we first look at the sitter, we're trying to understand where we are in relationship to her. We're seeing where the center line is, we're seeing where the eye line is, and we're trying to understand the front of the face versus the side of the head. When we start to draw, we're drawing the overall. We're starting to think a very soft and ghostly line that starts to give us the place on which we're going to start to put blocks of tone and then understand later on our detail. So standing some distance back from our easel, we're starting to think, in this case, very soft. This is a compressed charcoal, and if we push too hard, that dark line is going to be very hard to get rid of. So at this early stage, we're putting down a very thin ghostly line. And at this stage, any mistake we make or any difference we need to add is easily made. We don't want to try and do an outline that is then very difficult to correct. So we start to think center line, and that starts to give us this distance, the nose to the side of the face versus then the nose to the back of the head. So a very small distance there. So we run that down and we could run that right the way back as a transparent axis. The eyes are in the halfway of the head and we can see that we could measure that and put a very soft again axis line through here. This gives us the idea that our ear, slightly higher than our eyes, we're looking down into that halfway axis. Anything, in this case eyes, is put on at the beginning just as soft marks. We also note that our nose, halfway from our eye down to our chin, and we're starting to again put that on just as a very soft mark. So no more than that. Our lips will register just as a very simple mark. We do the top lip and then we do just under the bottom lip. No more than that. We can see that our tone blocks are starting to have somewhere to go. So having placed on some really light ghostly underdrawing, we're thinking also to where our ear might be. In this case it goes in a corridor from the top of our eye and the bottom of our nose. So we can draw a line that would go very lightly around and that corridor then produces the place on where our ear can sit. From our jawline we can start to think where that might be around there and a little bit of a darker mark might tell us where that sort of begins. It doesn't need to be registered too strongly at this point. We're starting to think also too about where we are, our neck and shoulders. And interestingly, our shoulder comes out from about behind our chin there, from where I am. So we can place that through almost as a single line. We have our neck that comes down straight from behind our ear about so to there down to the base of our neck here. We're thinking about our neck being a nice cylindrical shape. From the base of the neck here, down to the front of the neck there, at the top of the sternum, there is a bit of an angle and it's thinking about it in three dimensions that starts giving us somewhere to draw. If we just think about these as outlines, then we don't start to think about our volume and then our tone doesn't really mean anything and has no direction. So we start to think blocks of tone and we're starting to put down with the lightest side of our charcoal in a very light fashion. The side of the face, side of the nose, this side all being in shadow. And if we go lightly enough, very lightly if we can, then we don't have to take much off. You know, it's just a matter of adding and continuing to add. 
So by going up at a very slow rate to begin with, and thinking about where our shapes are going, and that word shapes is very good because we're very good at organising shapes and measuring shapes against each other. We're not so good at actually being able to compare sizes of detail. So we're placing on shadow shapes. In this case there's a hair out the back here, from the ear to about to there. And those shapes of hair can be placed on with a single direction. And blocked in. And that idea of blocking in means that there's no detail with inside it. And effectively we can start to change these shapes if we need to, but at this early stage that's not too difficult. So we've given ourselves a, a start on which we can start to place some detail a little bit later. At this stage we just need these blocks of tone to operate as an underdrawing. Draw the tunic. Our collarbones slightly placed on, just as a vague shadow. And our neck comes down, just see it as being slightly darker on occasions. The jawline slightly darker especially when we get down to our chin and we start to just think about some smaller areas of tone around the nose we're thinking of it as being at this stage as just being dark side and light front so we're trying to get these shadow shapes down trying to be quite truthful to the shape And that means standing back, assessing, not getting in close and doing detail. So in finishing off a little bit of the shapes of the shoulder and trying to place on as lightly as possible some of these external elements to the portrait, those things are really helpful in giving us the idea of the portrait being in a space. Sometimes even a little bit of background tone helps. So just placing in some more tone within the portrait. We're getting close to finishing that first phase of drawing where we've blocked in in very flat tone, the bigger shapes of the head. We've brought the drawing from a line state up to a blocked in tone state. 